Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23. And in this episode, I am looking to Kerbal rate the Dellinger 2 launcher. And that's the launcher that I've been using in many episodes so far, uh, which has the two stages. The first stage down here uh, has, uh, which rocket is it? It's this rocket, the LR-89. And this is the booster engine used in the Atlas launch vehicle, as it says right there. It does not have any throttling, minimum thrust 822, maximum thrust 822. Its engine ISP is fairly modest, in fact I think it's worse than practically any uh, equivalent uh, rocket at this stage in uh, stock KSP. And it burns kerosene and liquid oxygen. The second stage rocket is a much better rocket as far as uh, ISP is concerned, but only in the vacuum. It's horrible at sea level. It's the rocket that was used in the second stage of the Saturn 1 vehicle. It is cryogenic, which means that in this case it uses liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, but has fairly little thrust. Um, so that's that's been our launcher, and that's... I'm going to stick with that configuration, partly because some of the other rockets don't really fit with this, and we're going to try and Kerbal rate it, which means we need to bring the maximum G-forces in this vehicle on the way up and on the way down to acceptable safe levels. I also want to figure out what kind of payload, max payload we can put on this while still just getting into orbit. So uh, we're going to dump this payload right now. Mm to press shift and delete okay and now we're going to add a dummy payload and the dummy payload is gonna have a probe core uh, so well why don't we uh, put the one with Mooner experiments just for future purposes let's say I'm not going to completely uh, discount the possibility that we're gonna do something a little bit more interesting than just tests on this mission but But whatever we're gonna, no, well, I, I guess we have to uh, go normal on this one. So we're going to be trying to bring this one back down safely and see the g-forces on that part as well. So I need a sufficient heat shield. Okay, and then we need some antenna stuff, right? Because otherwise things are not going to. Uh, I, uh, I, I don't think this tank uh, scales down, does it? Yeah, it doesn't scale down in width, so maybe I should just go for a uh, one meter tank. I want to be able to put a substantial mass on, though. That's the key. How much would this mass be if I added a full tank of... Oh, heck. Um... Let's just say a full tank of kerosene. How much does it make? Oh, wait, oh, see, not much. Uh, 0 0.6 tons. And if it was N204, 1 ton. And just so I get a rough idea. It looks like it's about a, a 1 ton tank, let's say, right now. Uh, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking about how I'm going to fit the antenna on. Well, the heat shield is a pretty heavy thing, though. I'm trying to get as much mass as possible, uh, well, I wouldn't say as much mass as possible, but the, but the right amount of mass, so that I can do this test, and, well, I guess that'll be fine. So we want to be able to control this, so that means thruster blocks. I am going to look for one that has hydrazine configured. Okay, so these are hydrazine. Diddler. I'm trying to figure out the differences between these. I guess we'll go with this one. Seems reasonable. The thrust of power is much more reasonable for this sort of vehicle. Uh, this one was overpowered, I think. And this one has less mass, so that's also good. We don't need such significant RCS and oh if this is gonna be RCS we have to use the service module tank don't we <sighs> this is not the part I wanted to spend a lot of time on but well, here we are 
Okay, service module tank. Okay. Oh, uh, somebody in the comments had mentioned putting the RCS close to the center of mass. I should do that. So, that's a lot of hydrazine. Wow. Well, when you pack this with hydrazine, it really carries a lot of hydrazine. Seven tons worth. Okay, let's not do that. That's a lot of hydrazine. Um, well, let's make this smaller then. So I'll try and put the RCS ports on the center of mass, but let's let's figure out whether that's doable or not. Uh, the heat shield is sitting right there after all. Wow, that's weird. So I, I didn't change it by that much in terms of size, did I? Let's say I go here. How much hydrazine does it carry now? I wonder how it managed to get seven tons in. That was weird. Okay, but uh, yeah, I need a substantial amount of mass here. Let's see. I'm not gonna get it now. Okay, fine, whatever. That that should be enough. And center mass. Well, that's pretty low, you see. Well, I'll get I'll get close to it, but. Oh, these are interesting little RCS ports, aren't they? Uh, that doesn't look quite like what it uh, looks like in the picture, does it? Um, I have done something wrong, I think. Okay. Stop that. Stop that. Okay, there we go. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, what sort of RCS ports are these? Okay, um... But the one direction is blowing directly at the heat shield, so that's not very favorable. But let's see what kind of mass we have on this. Oh, for that, I guess we'll go with mech gem. Point 0.5? I don't believe it. I don't believe it because with the heat shield... Let me, let me put a decoupler at the bottom of this thing. Yeah, okay, uh, well, I hope that it doesn't add the mass of the decoupler itself. No, it doesn't. Because uh, the heat shield itself is uh, 0.46. This tank was 0 0.4, uh, 0 0.4 just about. So, yeah, okay, one ton sounds about right. Now, we need to actually add a lot more mass. Maybe extend this tank, but let's get our antennae on first. I want to try and rate this for two tons, actually. Maybe one and a half at least. Well, let's just stick the this one on the top like I've been doing. Right. Okay. And hey, uh, why don't we uh, while we're at it do some science? Um, Get two of those gravioli detectors on, just in case we happen to pass over um, a biome we haven't done yet. Though I really need to look up which ones we've done and which ones we haven't. And some battery power. Okay, well they're not going to fit perfectly. Let's move the graviolis up. And... Okay, I wanted to get some solar panels on. Let me do that right now. Okay. This is just a quick and dirty thing. Uh, let's, oh, whoa, that was, that's, those are big, huh? We don't need big things like that. Uh, Trying to get these to be. Well, let's. No. Nope. No. Nope. Yeah, that way. Okay. That's fine. And I was going to put batteries on. 
Let's just uh, have one actually, right there. Oh, we can fit another one here. Let me temporarily take Mechjeb off. Two of these. Okay, 1.1 ton is not what I wanted. I wanted something... Well, okay, but uh, we're not counting the, the fairing, which is pretty heavy actually. But let me try and get the mass up just a little bit more. This is pretty big though. Let me get 1.2 tons there. Gonna move the graviolis down now. Okay, so this is just a dummy payload, really. And what I want to do is take that off, put this oh, put this on. Where did my fairing go? Oh, there it is. Ghostly fairing. Okay, let's see how much this the mass of this is. 1.5 tons? And how much uh, Delta V do we have? We've got a lot. It strikes me that we can definitely add more mass to this if we want to. So what's the best way to add mass? Something completely useless for this, perhaps? Not life support. Yeah, I think uh, adding life support would make sense. Let's have some life support containers just for the heck of it. To see how much we can weight us down. Which, how big is That's huge. Small. Oh, well, that's more in line. But that's too small. I'm going to have to put a ton of those. Well, a ton wouldn't be the problem. I mean a lot of those. Okay. Uh, a little bit ugly, but that's more to the point. How much is the mass now? 1.7? And how much delta V do we have? Okay, it doesn't want to get back on. Well, that's not that's not wrong. That's, that's about what I'm looking for. Maybe even a little bit less than that. Gonna sneak. Uh, maybe I can use some of the radial ones. Let's see, is this space? I think there's space. A radial food, life support tanks. By the way, tag life support doesn't come with these textures. Normally, these textures are uh, add-on textures that you can find in the thread for tag life support. Well, let's just carry water, right? That's pretty... actually, uh, we can... that's huge, though. These are about right size. Well, I'm sure the center mass... well, it actually probably should be still around here, down here somewhere. So it's not a big difference. Okay, now we've got two tons, uh, plus the fairing, right? So a two-ton payload, including the fairing, for this launcher. And I think the Delta V is about right for, for all purposes. Okay, um, so now, this is a little bit low on the sea level thrust weight ratio, so let's bring this down. And I'm going to increase the size of this stage. And we want a maximum of six here. So I'm going to try this out. This is 1.7 tons here now. But I think that's just the payload inside the fairings and the fairings itself 
would be uh, two tons, like so. Um, all right, uh, must check that uh, everything is full up. And actually, this tank needs to be optimized. I want 2.7 here. Three. This is for three lights of the engine. The liquid fuel and oxidizer is only using used for lighting the engine, and we can fill the rest with with the liquid oxygen and keros uh, liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen. Then this one is the kerosene, and we can fill that up. Okay, and. I'm going to continue to reduce the size of this stage. And we still got a max thrust to weight ratio of 6, which is my intended maximum. Alright. I think this is a good rocket. Uh, so um, I'm still soliciting, trying to get uh, names for the crewed missions. The first set of crewed missions in, uh, of course, with Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, they used uh, Greco-Roman mythology, and I'm look maybe maybe some mythological names would be good, but uh, for now this is just uh, a launch test of the, and we used the Norse god for this, the Norse god of Dellinger, uh, god of dawn. So this is Dellinger to optimization test okay so that was ready for 1.5 tons to LEO we're trying for two well really uh, it's uh, 1.7 tons plus uh, 0.3 tons of the fairing all right so I think uh, this is completely wrong hold on uh, these can go up here definitely not at the same time all right, so let's uh, test this out with this new optimization and see the key is whether it can get into a nice circular orbit uh, despite the fact that this has a very low thrust. It's got a very long burn. So the trick is getting it into the right trajectory so that it can complete this burn in time. Okay, here we go. And SAS on, throttle up. And uh, it's looking good, so let's uh, let's fire it up. So trying for a very normal trajectory here, and and we'll see how it works. Now, uh, but the uh, trajectories always have to be optimized for these things. Uh, I've got a lot of delta v, so that's good. I have, so I've got fudge factor, but still need to make sure that we actually get into orbit um, and that means timing it right so that the well I'll show you I mean if I do it wrong I'll definitely be showing you what could go wrong and if I do it right uh, hopefully you'll see a good model for that in the previous episode I mentioned the uh, 2014 Isaac Asimov Memorial debate and it looks like that's available on YouTube so you could just watch that and while you're at it might as well watch some of the older ones as well and those are real fun they they gather a bunch of people on controversial subjects and in this case it's uh, how to uh, make space travel appealing was this year's and of course that's right in line with all the Kerbal Space Program stuff they got some of the people trying uh, well they got the CEO of the company that offers the trip on the Soyuz, right? Uh, so if you pay, what, $50 million, you can take a trip to the International Space Station. So the guy in charge of that uh, set up. They also uh, have uh, uh, some of the other people involved in those sort of space adventure things, but also people who are involved in the political side of everything. Um, somebody... Uh, who was on a congressional committee uh, investigate uh, to uh, deal with, uh, for instance, the Constellation Project, which um, I think Neil deGrasse Tyson, the host of the debate, um, was also involved in that particular committee. 
but uh, so so people of uh, substantial stature talking about this subject and so interesting to hear what they have to say obviously uh, it would have been a very different thing if uh, Elon Musk was there because well frankly it doesn't look like he's uh, very well liked uh, at this point but uh, I'm not entirely sure why but I guess he could uh, rub people the wrong way within the existing framework of things but uh, yeah so it was certainly interesting to watch and uh, the uh, previous years the debate was also very interesting similar illustrious cadre of guests and of course Neil deGrasse Tyson always makes it interesting lots of humor speaking of which uh, the new cosmos um, I have to say that I, I like Carl Sagan's more. I, I, I'm a writer myself, so uh, Carl Sagan, of course, uh, uh, had a very poetic approach to the whole thing. And it's not quite there. I mean, it's uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson is great and all, but uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not a huge. Oh, I didn't uh, hot group the the antenna on the top. Anyway, I, 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 the special effects, of course, are uh, hugely updated. And so we've got a lot of great visuals. But I'm actually, I actually tend not to watch the TV when I'm watching TV. I actually listen to the television. So, so that sort of negates the whole visual appeal thing. And I'm really just listening in. And listening in the poetics of the original uh, cosmos sort of uh, won me over, and it wasn't quite as poetic in this case. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about the fact that they they have uh, animated portions that I didn't really care because I wasn't really looking at the screen very much. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'm very often doing something completely different while listening to television or YouTube. So, but yeah, I, I mean that. But that's nothing to take away from it. I mean, I'm glad that they're doing it. Certainly, uh, people should be exposed to uh, Cosmos, and it's it's doing basically the same. It's not uh, deviating very much from the original. It's it's pretty much the same, same format, same deal, same information being presented to a large extent, so far. So, uh, in terms of content, uh, not not a problem, and uh, definitely unimpeachable. But uh, style, style not quite there for me, and just for me. Of course, I I think it'll be great for for everyone. I'm definitely gonna watch all of it. So, watch, i.e., listen to all of it. So. But uh, yeah, so. That's my take on Cosmos so far. If you haven't watched the Carl Sagan one, I definitely recommend it. Okay, uh, we are. Uh, I'm looking at our time to apoapsis, and that's the thing I need to uh, keep up during the burn time of this stage. You can see the burn time is seven minutes and thirty-four seconds right now, and we've got uh, our time to apoapsis is dropping. So I'm gonna have to. This is not a good launch. Oh, it'll be good if I was trying to imitate Alan Shepard, but actually, it probably wouldn't be good in that case either. Uh, I'll explain. Uh, the G forces on the reentry portion will be too much if we don't get into orbit. Once you get close to orbit, you had better get to orbit. Uh, if you don't get to orbit, you're going to face reentry forces of. Uh, of significant magnitude. Not the heat, it's the g-forces I'm talking about here. Okay, yeah, definitely not a very good uh, approach to this one. Uh, well, let me see if I can at least uh, save it and bring it down safely. Actually, let's just take a peek at F3 for a sec. Okay, most G-forces endured, 6G. So far, 
so on the launch that's good. Now the question is what kind of G-forces we have on re-entry, right? And in this case it's probably going to be pretty harsh because uh, we're going to have a steep re-entry on the f because we're not going to make orbit this time. Uh, well, I mean, we we could still make orbit, but uh, uh, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. If you're wondering why I'm not tilting up, it's uh, I mean, I could if if we wanted to really force the issue, tilt up like this. Uh, and even more than that, but I'm actually not trying to force the issue like that. My main concern is making sure that we uh, we make uh, make our orbit uh, as shallow as possible. Uh, so instead of making it steep, right now this is very uh, a very steep descent. I want to go fast so that it'll shallow out, and that will uh, minimize the g forces on the vehicle. So that's my goal here, but a little bit of a tilt up isn't a bad, a bad thing, just to give us a little bit more time. Basically tilting up gives us a little bit more time before we hit the atmosphere, uh, but uh, you're trading off some of the horizontal velocity for that. Well, we've been connected throughout so far, that's nice. I mean, obviously we are way beyond line of sight with the KSC itself. We may... we're very close to orbit right now. Uh, we're probably going to dip into the atmosphere. I think I can... It's advisable to tilt up now if I want to. We're in the transition zone, so I've lost most of my frame rates. Uh, okay, we're in the atmosphere. Okay, what I'm going to do is not get into orbit with this. Let's bring it down safely here. And I think we are sufficiently shallow to do this now. Okay. Let's use our RCS to pull ourselves away. And also orient properly. Yep, these little RCS pods aren't the strongest things, but they shouldn't be anyway. It's better to have it realistic. Okay, and of course, to some extent, the atmosphere itself will tend to... Well, I was hoping it would tend to have our bottom end enter first. I think that should be the case. The center mass is certainly on that end of things. Right, uh, maybe I should just turn RCS off at this stage because it might be complicating matters. Okay, oscillation's bad, come on. Keep this. Time warping will just make it worse, I think. So let's just verify. We are 1.729 tons here. Does this have a retrograde? Yeah. Orient retrograde. Can I tell it to do that? Okay. Well, I mean, we're we're definitely getting there. All right. So now the question is, G forces on reentry. We're not particularly slowing down yet, but we are, our orbit is do dropping precipitously. 
Those are satellite communications, though, I mean, we don't really need to worry too much. Uh, yeah, we should be fine throughout. Oh, that's a high toss 2 probe that's uh, facilitating communication right now. Um, though there's Uragity Advanced, though that will be outside of the range of the, the RP-10 antenna, which is supposed to have a range of 5,000 kilometers, but we've seen that it seems to be able to do more than that. Okay, we are retrograde, and uh, I think... Uh, no, no, uh, just, just don't do anything. And we'll get our CS back on this. Tend a little bit towards this side. Now, in my other series, I had a time delay here. I don't see a time delay right now. I'm not too sure why. I hope I've got the whole. Well, unless uh, the realistic progression light pack tweaked it so that I wouldn't have a time delay. I actually liked that uh, aspect of realism. My other series, the KSB Interstellar series, I'm continuing from my Institute for Kerbal Studies series. And uh, in that series, I've got Remote Tech 2 as well. And we just did a mission to uh, fly by EVE uh, unmanned, and the time delay got serious. I mean, uh, almost a whole minute. So, so yeah, that was very interesting. And I hope that we will have a similar, a similar simulation issue here, but uh, I'm not seeing it right now. Good old signal delay. Okay, here we go. Does it look like this canister is getting heated up? No, it isn't. Now, are we going to lose communication with it? Well, I guess it really doesn't matter. No, if we want to pop the parachutes, it does. But really, I, I'm actually testing the G-forces, not, uh, not the ability to recover this. And of course, we've got vital data in order to try and get this thing into orbit. That's another important piece of information that we've got from this mission. Didn't do the gravioli though. Yeah, we didn't really gain any science out of this. But uh, I think we've done most of the biomes anyway. I don't think we hit any biomes that we've missed so far. Okay, the G-forces are a little bit beyond the 6G limit, but actually on re-entry I think I allow for a little bit more than that. But it is pushing it right now. 7Gs now. Definitely not uh, an ideal situation if we wanted to send Kerbals up. After all, with 7Gs on them, uh, they would find it very hard to uh, press any buttons in case something went wrong. Or to eject, for instance. Well, of course, ejecting in this situation would be a very bad idea. But, <laughs> uh, so they, they probably wouldn't want to eject at this point anyway. Okay, looks like it's definitely going down. Let's see how much our max G was. 7.7. Well, oh. But then again, this is a non-ideal re-entry. This was, uh, in fact, a completely uncontrolled re-entry. Um, so, so a re-entry from orbit should be much more gentle than this. So we've set a high, high limit on it. 7.7 G is probably the most that we would expect on re-entry from orbit. 
but uh, so yeah well let's uh, after I get this back down we should turn back to VAB and try and figure out what we need to do in order to get the orbit right mainly what I need to do is make sure that the first stage gets us going much faster horizontally uh, much less vertically and then the second stage needs to tilt up a little bit more in order to gain the, the uh, gain more apoapsis, go a little bit more vertical uh, while doing its horizontal thing. The problem was that the first stage got us too far vertically and not enough horizontally and therefore our apoapsis was already high when we when we uh, decoupled the first stage. So that's my diagnosis and I'm sticking to it and perhaps also the first stage if it's gonna get us going faster maybe I should allow it to have a little bit more fuel in than I did so make it a little bit more long-lasting give it more duration so mixed results on this test but uh, but I think we know what we need to do so let me try it one more time and see if we can't get uh, 1.7 ton payload plus 0.3 ton fairing into uh, into orbit safely and then return it safely. Okay, funny that the antenna is still sort of stuck up there. It's really not connected, I don't think. It's actually swaying a bit. It just doesn't want to fall off. All right. Okay. Oh, now it fell off. Okay, uh, right, SAS, try your best, please. Okay, we got it. Uh, measly point two science, of course. Uh, kind of as a suborbital flight, which it is. It was. So let's go back to the VAB and do some tweaking. So uh, two minutes forty-five seconds is not bad, but uh, really, it felt a little bit quick. So let's boost this up to to there and perhaps commensurately uh, bring this down and that will increase the the thrust to weight ratio on it and allow us to accelerate a little bit faster too we really don't actually you know what we really don't need that much delta V let's let's cut this by a lot more we had some left over anyway oh wait 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 I, I know why I have the big tank because we need to limit the thrust to weight ratio right right so uh, even though it's extra we're gonna carry it so that thrust weight ratio is six okay um, No, that wouldn't be a very uh, good way of doing that. Okay. But perhaps some of this, the mass that is uh, occupied by the second stage can be transferred to payload. Maybe we can make that payload mass instead of... Yeah, actually we should be able to do that. Let's add some more payload mass and reduce the size of... Well, but then that would just... Uh, the thrust weight ratio would just be worse. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that wouldn't be acceptable. Let's not do that for now. Let's keep the payload the same. But have this split between two stages instead. Maybe boost this to 915 since it's a nice round number. Okay, let's go with this. Okay, without further ado, SAS on, throttle up, and launch. So you really, uh, it's tough to optimize different things at the same time. Right now, I really need to focus on optimizing the launch profile, rather than optimizing the stages. I think uh, we'll have to keep this sort of... Uh, sizing of the stages stable while I try and figure out the launch profile otherwise uh, too many variables trying to adjust too many variables at the same time is going to complicate matters and make it uh, unreliable so we need reliable results and that means tweaking one variable at a time and uh, the variable I'm gonna go for first is the launch profile 
Uh, of course, it'd be much easier to tweak the launch profile having Mechjeb do all the maneuvers. Whoa, 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 hey. Because um, then you can uh, input uh, consistent numbers. But I'm doing it manually for now. Perhaps for the larger rockets, having Mechjeb do it so that I can get very, very fine tuned results would be a better idea. So the priority is on horizontal speed here, though I'm not going to dip too far down because we do need to still gain altitude. Oh, I should have action grouped that antenna at the top. Forgot about that. Okay, and I think perhaps 25 degrees is about right for this part now. Now, uh, I guess uh, since I didn't uh, action group that antenna, I have to do the same little trick where I separate one of the fairings and get to it. And it's not the interstage fairing adapter. Gotta have one of these side fairings come off. Yeah. Trying to get in there. Yeah. No, time to apoapsis lapse is definitely decreasing too quickly. Remember that on this stage, the control is entirely on the gimbling of the rocket. We don't have... I didn't put any reaction wheels on this, uh, this dummy payload. So... and we don't have RCS on, so... Time to apoapsis is still looking not so good. I'm gonna try for a higher apoapsis higher apoapsis this time. We should have the fuel for it and uh, obviously if I want the time to burn out this stage I'll, I'll need to oops, accept a little bit more altitude for that. Obviously I haven't had this problem recently because I've been putting satellites into high high orbit uh, in that case being beyond 32,000 kilometers so so we haven't really encountered the problem of having to burn this second stage out because we were going so high that there was plenty of time but now it's a little bit more constrained So let's aim for maybe 300 kilometers and uh, a circular orbit around 300 kilometers. We can of course use the RCS which we have plenty of in order to uh, deorbit ourselves. Oh, apoapsis, time to apoapsis is going up so not need to tilt so far up. I mean, at most I need to keep that stable, but uh, it really should keep decreasing, just slowly. Okay, uh, of course this rocket is also just on or off, so off. Okay, uh, 302, 265, let's say. 303, 265. That's not bad. Okay, uh, so now we have to verify that our, our hydrazine will be enough to deorbit this. And, of course, a potential pod as well. So the command pod that I plan to use will have uh, hydrazine and RCS in order to deorbit itself and then it will dump that service module before re-entering. 
this is of course going to carry its RCS with it, but I don't plan that for the for the crude pod. Anyway, um, let's let's make sure we're all safe and decouple. RCS can bring us forward. Okay, and all is well. Now, re-entering, I'd certainly want to put this into this ocean if possible. And really that doesn't take too much doing. With a blunt object like this, uh, compared to a shuttle, uh, it goes down pretty fast. So we'll do a small RCS burn on the other side. And actually let's let's aim it right over the KSC. Obviously we can do this thanks to our satellite communication network, otherwise we wouldn't be able to do this. And what's the periapsis? Okay. We want to simulate the sort of gentle re-entry that we would expect for um, for a crewed mission. And for that we dip in about 75 I think will be fine. 80 is not too bad either. Actually let's try... Uh, well let's try 80. Too, oops, I didn't need to do that but that should be a problem. Okay, so let's see what happens if we burn 80 and put the perigrade, uh, periapsis, uh, right over to KSC. Okay, so that's our planned burn, 55 meters per second. And let's see also how much hydrazine it takes to decelerate something of this mass by that much. Uh, yeah, I guess we can turn... Now, of course, the burn time is going to be long because this, these RCS ports are very weak. We'll have to put some of the stronger ones onto the crude capsule just to make sure that everything is kosher there. Okay, getting on the dark side here. Let me do a test burn with the, let's say I do, oh that's not too bad, that's actually, that's actually faster than I thought it would be. Does this thing have an RCS burn thing? No, it's just throttle. Oh, that would have been handy, so I don't have to keep my finger on the H button the whole time. But yeah, it'll, it'll take us a while to get this. Well, let's say it is 520 seconds. Yeah, I, I do have to start now. Okay, well, obviously, uh, see you on the other side of this particular burn. Okay, we're finally coming close to the end of our burn, and it looks like we basically burned let's say let's call it 55 units of hydrazine in order to uh, do a 55 meter per second delta V burn so I think we have enough hydrazine for about 400 uh, delta V there not bad okay just a few more seconds here as we get our periapsis to 80 and I don't really know exactly where our our periapsis ended up. We'll take a look at the map in a sec to figure that out. Okay, uh, we can take our CS off for now. Get rid of this maneuver node and let's see. Uh, <laughs> wow, that's pretty far off actually. Well, that's that's a long burn time for you when it tells you uh, that maneuver it uh, assumes you can burn it immediately but instead it took a few minutes so now we've got uh, periapsis on this side of the continent maybe we can aim for the KSC itself if if we can manage to avoid the mountains or something okay so again this is a full simulation of what we're gonna do with a manned mission with a vehicle 1.675 tons right now and the crew pod, the command pod uh, Mark 1 that we have is only one ton, so we've got plenty of space for the RCS. It's got uh, the um, heat shield built into it, so we don't have to worry about that. But uh, RCS and extra uh, life support supplies are doable. 
uh, as well as any electric charge we might want to add to it, any reaction wheel. We don't really don't need to throw on any reaction wheels. We'll we'll do everything with RCS. So yeah, all right. So let's time warp and get to re-entry position. Really don't want the key thing thing right now. Okay, so we're getting close to to that time. There's the plant skirting by. So let's turn on RCS and orient ourselves. Uh, turn on RCS and orient ourselves. Still all nice and connected. So this is a this is a good thing we've got going here. Uh, okay, we're getting that lag that occurs right in the atmospheric transition. Come on, get through this, get through this. Okay. Okay, it's overdoing it now. It's overdoing it. No, come on. Uh, all right, let me let me use this little thing because it seems competent at this sort of thing. Let me ask it to do retrograde because uh, with the small RCS port, it's a little bit frustrating to try and get it to reorient properly. All right, uh, we're all nice and connected, like I said, and I think our previous uh, tests show that. We will be able to maintain communication nicely. Mm, our periapsis is dropping very quickly now, and it's dropping in the middle of this ocean. So I'll, we might actually end up hitting here, I don't know, or on this side of the continent. Well, we'll find out. Uh, as long as we know what we set it to initially, and I, I keep forgetting to account for... Um, for the rotation of the planet, which is something I really need to remember when I figure out these things. So aiming for a KSC like that, I, uh, the re one of the reasons why we ended up on this side of the continent is because, of course, the planet itself rotated. So just not not keeping that in mind, somewhat of a problem. Okay, so here we go. Let's time warp through this portion. Ooh, there's the RCS going like crazy. Actually, not too. I mean, when you look at it, not too much. Oh, uh, before we hit the rough patch of the G forces, let me see the G top G forces on launch. Okay, so it was six G max on the on the ascent. But uh, keep in mind, most of that came like right at the first stage uh, decoupling. Uh, so for most of the ascent, uh, G forces were in uh, below 4G. I mean, it was very manageable. And for our first attempt at uh, manned missions, I don't think that's uh, that's too bad. Keeping uh, 6G uh, uh, prolonged would be a very bad thing, I think. At least it wouldn't be very safe. But for just that moment, I think that's good. Okay. I think we're starting to get into the part of the atmosphere where I don't want it being physically time warped because it might spin out and do some crazy stuff. We'll continue to burn the hydrazine, I think. Well, I guess we should try uh, check the orientation without the hydrazine. Let's take off hydrazine. And, uh, and actually turn off the flight computer and just use SAS. Okay, so we are going to come down in this ocean, it looks like. Could be worse. But the critical thing is, let's see the g-forces on this fairly gentle re-entry profile. I mean, this is about as gentle as I can make it, while still ensuring that it's not going to bounce off of the atmosphere. 
so let's see if it works. Four G. Five G. Six G. We've got a rotation. And G forces are declining. Let's see what the max was? 6.7 G. Well, that's uh, certainly an improvement over the previous mission, which had 7.7 G. 6.7 is still a little bit harsh. But for this style of mission, just getting into space for the first time, maybe it's acceptable. The safety factor for our rockets, of course, is uh, not too much of an issue in Kerbal Space Program anyway because our, our rocket engines are actually 100% uh, reliable. And those will be the ones that will be most... Uh, most con of most concern during rocket testing is the engines themselves though uh, though other things do happen but yeah so I think uh, I think we're pretty close I think yeah I think I'll wrap up uh, testing for today uh, if you have any comments suggestions do leave those in the comment section below and in particular I want to request any uh, names you want to contribute for the mission. The launcher is called the Dellinger 2, so whatever mission name it is will uh, go in front of that. And uh, yeah, let me not forget to deploy parachutes here, even though we don't have any science on board. Um, yeah, so that's that note. Yep. Yeah. So as we bring this to the surface I will uh, thank you for watching this episode of Realism Overhaul in KSP.23 and uh, yeah I think we're just waiting for this to uh, splash down here ooh actually it's uh, it's pretty heavy huh I mean it's uh, going down at uh, 10.7 meters per second that's a little bit worrying might need more parachutes on... well, the pod will have totally different parachutes anyway. Okay, on that splashdown and with this... with this... recovery for Zero Science, I will see you next time.